it is in, indeed MLP Dota and John X Fire. Jonathan, welcome. We are here at TI for this best of one series between Fnatic and, of course, the side of Gaming Gladiators. You've seen the draft, John. How are you feeling about them? Pretty excited. Should be a really explosive game coming out here. We see the sniper come out with the TA. Lots of combinations coming from both sides. Primal Beast for Gaiman. And there's a lot going on there, right? Like, there, there's so much aggression that can come out from each side for Fnatic. I think the TA timing, we heard the panel talk about that. You hit that, you run around with the Tombstone, you've got a, a sniper that can just keep hitting away with that minus armor as well. Then you can start to overwhelm. But counterpoint, Gaiman, I mean, they've got that global silence coming in. Once you hit level six in your sniper, Primal Beast can really dominate the lane if you can just gap close in this matchup. So if you can get all of those beats going for Gaiman, they can also find that timing. So it's, it's going to be a lot of back and forth. I think the laning phase is key for both sides here. So big. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, in classic SEA fashion, Jonathan, we've got to pause the start of the game. We, we can't cast if there's no pause happening at the start of the game. So it is a very necessary pause to happen here. Uh, Fnatic again against Game and Jonathan. It's a best of one. One of these teams has to go home today. It's going to be heartbreaking. Do, do you favor one team or the other? I mean, the panel was Fnatic favored. What are you thinking? I think draft draws. Draft wise, I'd say Fnatic. Uh, I do like Sniper. I enjoy Sniper when it comes out. I think with the TA, you've got a very solid win condition. It, it's just a little bit greedy. Right? If they've got to be able to play around that early power, the Undying's going to give them in the laning phase, try to run around at that time and play with a Tombstone, maybe get a little bit of a push going as well once Jabs is ready to go on his Visage. And if you can get that done, your early timings are kind of secure. Again, the panel pointed out, you don't have the best answers for that Visage last day. It's going to be very, 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 very tough, I think, because we are going to get underway once again, I do believe. Game is unpaused. We should be getting into it very, very soon. Jonathan, game one, of course, it is a best of one series, so there is only one game to go. But let's, uh, let's see how this one pans out. Fnatic against Gaming Gladiators. They do get started. You kind of pointed out the fact that they don't have the greatest way of dealing with the birds this game. What do you think they do about it? Like, how do you deal with the business? Hey, you just got to try to focus down to here. You've got good jump coming in. From your storm, you've got follow through from the primal beast. Even the morphling, once he has something defensive, can help out too. Just try to get some vision on the back line. That's where it gets tough. I and mean, you're up against a clockwork. Visage is going to be scouting around as well with his familiars. So, if again, if Fnatic just plays around that informational advantage, it's going to be hard to find that angle for the gladiators. But if they can, if they can sneak that storm across, you don't have the best lockdown here either from Fnatic to keep that storm in. Very, very true. We are looking to stare each other down right now. Januel and Boom just having a look at each other across the mid lane as the stickers are going to come down here from Armel. Very, very cute kind of doggy there in the, uh, the mid river. So Celery going to show up as well on the silencer just in case. But I highly doubt we see a level one team fight to break out here. So both teams just kind of sussing each other out, making sure no sneaky wards go down in the mid lane. Bot side. Looks like Fnatic should have this one under wraps. And top side, you do have DJ on the clockwork. He's hanging around, thinks, seeing if he can try and sneak this boundary in away from Tofu's Rachio. The but they are going to show up and just kind of bully him away. DJ is going to walk his way up. It's going to be a three for one trade anyway. Raven, the only one to pick up the boundary for Fnatic. Yeah, nice little bonus coming out for the Gladiators, of course. Just having a little bit more into that initial bottle build up is going to be really important for Boom in his matchup up mid up against that Sniper Farmel, so we do get the Sniper Storm matchup that you don't get to see too often. That does feel a little bit more playable for Armel here. I think the first two levels are going to feel pretty good. Level 3 is going to be nice as well. For Boom, Rune Control is going to have to be key. I mean, you can't, you just can't walk up and harass Armel. Even if you've got that double Overlord charge at level 3, if you want to go for that play, can be a bit tough. Maybe you see some rotations come in. Uh, rotation out from Sniper, maybe get to, uh, from the Silencer, get a little bit of a slow going. You can try to bully it if Armel just kind of overextends it. Yeah, it's a classic Storm Spirit. I mean, any Spirit Brother really, it's just all about the power into that six minute mark and we'll see if he is able to secure it. Of course, down a bolt lane, Celery gonna be there on your position for Silencer. Jen, you are gonna be against him on that pause five on dying. And you are gonna have, of course, the uh, the cause of the Primal Beast, the top lane as well. Of course, Tofu gonna try and chase down DJ here as DJ does actually manage to get the pull away on this creep wave. He's managed to keep the aggro as well. Looks like they aren't gonna bother trying to follow him down and punish him for this either. Just kind of let him go. You're not going to really, really be able to punish too much with the snap fire. Yeah, and this is a really good start for Fnatic. You get that level that you need on DJ, start to work towards level 2, level 3, you get to jab some solo EXP as well. Once you do manage to chase one of them down with a battery assault, 
you're just going to get so many charges of that soul assumption. It should be easy to chase them down for a kill. Absolutely. Plus Raven against AC down at the spot side, John. Do you, do you think the Primal Beast gets a lot of uh, a lot of harassment from this TA? Should it be a free lane for Raven, or should it go the other way? Should Ace have the free time? It's going to take a few levels for Ace. Like you can try to melt down Raven. John, you're well, doing a great job of being that distracting force, because obviously with the silencer you can just stop that the case spam out by constantly applying that arcane curse. John Newell is ready and he's got five mangoes on hand. So you can play that game for a long time. And as long as Ace can't get on top of Raven, he doesn't have that angle to just trample in and run him down and melt through that refraction. You're pretty safe to just farm here as reflected in the CS. Yeah, some starting builds just never change with this damn undying. You're just always spamming mangoes. It's just the way to go, especially with the nerf that happened with the decay as John Newell waiting for another double, but not going to be able to find it. Just go ahead onto Ace. Take some of that strength away, but it is giving Raven a, a very free time here. This bottom side to just keep that free farm going. You could say the same thing about the mid lane as well. Like, you've got this sniper who's really just not taking any harass. You kind of talked about this already, but Boom can't really do too much on the Storm Spirit up until maybe that level 3 mark, but even then, it's it's pretty tough to close the gap on armor. Yeah, it's, it's just not range that the Storm can be played with a top, though. Okay, so get the cookie away, we'll be just fine, DJ. Able to keep up with the snap fire, but we'll force the morph link and the snap back. It's like again, even the visage having a, a very good time right now at the top side. And in fact, you look at all three cores of Fnatic at the moment, they are all top of the CS board. So it seems like at least for now, all lanes have been won because we are still very, very early into it. And as the levels do go up, things may change, but so far, so good for the Radiant side. Yeah, they're, they're just working these things really well. I think DJ with his moves, Ace. run forward. It's an onslaught of wage, and you're not really going to be able to punish him too much. Creepwave his whalers mid lane, Raven. Boom, we're going at it here on the Stormburst Sniper matchup, but and it's kind of hard for Boom to finish off the job prior to that level. Six marks of what to leave him be. Meanwhile, top lane, Duraccio, he's going to be just fine to wave form away. So the harass is coming out between this clockwork visage laning, so a little bit tough for the Morphling just to juggle that strength in the edge. make sure he's got enough HP to get through this whole assumption, but now doing a fantastic job here as the clockwork as DJ. Continue the chase onto Tofu, will not allow the small camp pull away. Very, very annoying for, for gaming gladiators. They just can't reset the creep equilibrium at this top lane. Yeah, it's a really good place from DJ. Just holding this lane so well, giving Jabs basically a free lane, 15 to 7 CS, and keeping the Rotra just super under farm. I mean, the Morphling's not the happiest hero going into the jungle. Does need a lot of time to get that build up, so slower laning is just a going to be a lot of damage onto Boom. He's trying to make a run for it, but the headshot is kicking in as now. DJ going to shop as well. Boom, he's just going to put the hand up. Very fire out. He'll survive. Just barely as bottom lane. Tombstone dropped as well. Genuel not going to be able to really keep that one alive. So Celery, go ahead and take that down and make sure Ace does survive. First blood yet to be drawn. Yeah, just, just playing, poking, and prodding in this lane. Yeah. It's still in danger, though. Oh, it's a big kill. He's still level 5 here. Boom can't get away from it. And Armel is going to be able to secure first blood. They'll take D-Day's life, but it won't matter. In fact, they even force two rotations into the mid lane. They, they have to drag in both supports. The Cog's just burning some of that mana away as well from Celery as he comes in. It's just so much space now in the sidelines. Like, the mid's going pretty rough for Boom. But now Jabs has a really free time, Raven's just farming up, you don't quite have the solutions yet, and you kind of have to wait for that Storm to try to work onto that 6. Once he's got the zip around, it's going to be a lot safer to leave him alone. Until that point, I'm just getting to that point for Boom is it's tough with how focused Fnatic is on that lane. Bottom lane though, they might be able to trade very nicely as Raven dropping not really too low. He had the refraction charges, so he was just fine. In fact, Ace was the one who took too much damage. Able to really deal with the meld strike and the, the strength steal of Januel. Their way out here, Fnatic, just one to one. Still, all lanes just going their way. I mean, you look at Durantia back up the top side, and it does seem like he's been able to catch up in terms of net worth and the morphling, but it is still a rather slow process. Yeah, it, it's going to be slow going. He's going to need a lot of space. They need to secure their jungle, buy some time out for Duracho. Left alone like this, and you have perfect control coming out from Fnatic. A DJ agent, again just forcing Tofu to chase him down a bit, get some forward vision in that jungle to contest the farm down the line. They're going to have to really use that economy to clear out some control here. DJ just being an absolute pest, taking the banner and away from Gaiman. Once again, this mid lane going to be pressured in. They've got the siege creep there with Armel, so plenty of damage being pumped out. Tofu going to try and sneak away with the invis, but will go for the deny instead, realizing he cannot break the gap in time. Just a lot of pressure being applied onto this mid-tier one tower and 
Gaiman, they are they are forced to try and respond to this, but they've left Ace alone down a bot lane, so Raven, he might just get right to work. Ace, he's gonna try to back his way out and does juke very nicely. Raven, does he keep going? It does seem like he'll try. Onslaught will be there. Ace, he'll be just fine. Not secure with the kill. Problem being though, John, mid T1, it's still taking so much damage. Uh, it's just melting. Less than half HP left just from the slow prods from our Mel with his little long range sniper rifle, of course. And there's just no response that the gladiators have on hand. They, they just don't have the support staff and really jump onto that hero well. Maybe if you can bring out Ace, that's where you can start to play that game. But it's going to take a little bit of time. He's not even level six yet. DJ again, just ready to scout out if necessary. He does see a few stacks being made there by Tofu. He does get a very nice D ward as well in the mid lane. Armel just getting right back to work into that mid T1 tower. Just nobody around to defend this. Even Gladiators maybe just accepting the fact that it is going to drop for free, basically, is Fnatic. Not intending on backing off. While top lane, Durachio, dealing with these frustrating birds of jabs, just can't really do too much about them. It's burn. We'll turn back into the mid lane here, but it's kind of dire straits as to what he can do to, to try and slow this push down. It's like he will be enough just clearing out that creep wave, but now Fnatic, they'll just take the stacks instead. I mean, these are just double stacks, but it is something. Yeah, it's something that you need on Duracho. He's gonna need that catch-up form. Even Boom is gonna be enjoying that if he had access, but they just didn't manage to clear out that control. Fnatic sees that opening, shoving in mid, getting a little tension away and having that room to get that done. They're working this map really well. It's still a very even game, one-to-one. -one. 1k lead for Fnatic, but these two cores in the sniper, in the TA, are just getting so much more in this game so far. What to one though. Eight minutes in a very, very slow game when it comes to the kill board. Just secure that laning stage. Again, Fnatic seemingly coming out on top, at least for now. Lane even Tofu taking over. Switching that XP himself, but they might get going onto that T1 once again. Just so important because you are gonna be able to infiltrate that jungle as soon as this T1's down and the Fnatic, they can choose to be very aggressive with this clockwork and undying support duo. Though GG, they are gonna show up. Who do they jump? Ooh, nice cogs away from DJ. Not gonna allow them to jump the snipe, so instead they'll try to go after Januar. But he's a tanky boy. He's not gonna try drop that quickly. His ace is gonna keep moving in. Pulverize will be there and they will at least find the pos 5 undying. Yeah, it's a kill. It's not the one you want. Really good timing out from DJ with those cogs to break off that jump in from Boom and it's, it's so many heroes down mid, you're only really leaving Garacho alone to farm, and even that solo lane up against Gabs isn't giving him much. Like, I like what I'm seeing from the Gladiators. Level 6 up on Boom, they want to make a play. Yeah. They have the level 6 coming out from Ace as well. They're going to Jabs. Yeah, they've got a great target, Jabs. He's a higher value Celery. target right now on the business, so Celery is dropping rather quickly, but they do at least find Jabs. It's a nice trade. It does cost you quite a few hero rotations, but you've got to get something done. Yeah, it's some punishment at last, because that lane was just left alone for so long. They just ignored Duracho and just allowed Jabs to get that build up. It's finally something coming along for the Gladiators. Big kill for them, giving them some space up top, giving Duracho room to get more than just this Power Treads and Falcon Blade. And the side of Fnatic, well, they've already cleared the mid tier. So they're more than happy to kind of trade off that way. As you mentioned, Mike, jungle opens up, triangle contestion comes in. And if the gladiators aren't careful, I mean, you still need some Ace. more on Boom and Ace. In a bit of uh, deep water here, Ace, I think. He's kind of getting pinched in here by DJ, but he's just going to onslaught away. Still, the bird's trying to stun him up mid onslaught, but not quite finding him. He's going to be just fine. Able to stay within that bot lane and keep that farm going. But you kind of accept the fact that you can't slow down Armel anymore, you can't slow down Raven anymore, you've just got to try and keep up in terms of net worth, and for now they are at least only 1k behind. So it's not too big of a deal for Game, and just keep buying space for these cores to make their way back in through the mid game. The question is, do Fnatic make their way into that dire jungle now and try to slow them down? Uh, there, there's some pressure to do that, not too much. I mean, they still have really good control on their own jungle, but their own tier 1, so it's still very healthy, so they can just kind of play on their side of the river. They're not going out so far. They're shoving in mid, keeping that in check. They've got some good wards to watch. Some angles coming in here from the gladiators onto that ramp in front of the tier one tower bot to make sure Raven's just fine. And they're just kind of using Jabs as bait of top solo. They want them to go onto Jabs. He's already got the drums up. They're keeping an eye on him. They're rotating in for this. I'm gonna try and smoke up the top side. Jabs already in trouble. They might not make it in time. Jabs still dropping. Eventually will go down. Another nice secure here from G GG as Boom does take the kill on the Storm and Fnatic. They're up here, but without the Visage, what do you actually do? 
Yeah, it's, it's not the biggest loss. I mean, Jabs is just doing his thing, keeping that lane shoved out, forcing a lot of heroes on time. You've you got so much space coming out for your bigger course in Raven and RML. RML now just hanging around. He has the Dragon Lance up. Even with just level one take aim with the Dragon Lance, you can reach so far away. You're going to need a lot of mana expended out from Boom to find that kill. They will smoke up in the Gladiator, so looking for that opportunity here. Yeah, they've got the Arcane Rune still going here on Boom, so very nice timing for them to try and make the jump in, but DJ is prepped in position, ready to break the smoke, and will take the gank. Beast for now, still making a run away. Hookshot away is gonna be there as well. DJ, gonna be just fine. No cool down on the Hookshot anyway, he won't mind that. Not feeding any more kills away, but now Armel's been caught out. That's a much bigger target, and they do find it. Boom with a perfect zip in as DJ, he's not out of the woods yet either. He's gonna drop to the way of gaming gladiators and Fnatic, they just don't have an answer for it. I mean, look good, DJ managed to sneak away, but it just opened up this path towards Armel. And suddenly the gladiators, they're the ones taking aggression here. They're lined up for that top tier one tower. A really good use of the bottle from Boom with the Arcane, just giving him enough mana to play so far in. And just no control coming out from Fnatic. We saw a TP coming in from John Yuan, but the Undying at that point couldn't really contribute. Very, very rough affair here. Fnatic just kind of trusting Raven and Armel to keep that farm going, but again, Game and doing a fantastic job of applying the pressure now. With that terrible start they did have after that laning stage, they just seemed to be able to apply the pressure much better with the Storm. Doom doing a, a brilliant job of just rotating constantly and relieving the pressure off Duraccio here and Ace as well. The team minutes in two to six, very, very slight net worth lead for Fnatic. May not last long either, as you see, Game and they are starting to take stacks away. It's going to certainly impact the gold income of, uh, of Game and there's nothing to stop them. You can't really get that deep quite yet. No, you're, you're just building up on Fnatic's side as well. It's really allowed the Roger to catch up. Number three net worth not too far behind from Armel after that pretty slow laning start with jabs and DJ just kind of pulling out that lane. He's got enough room to have his impact. There are some key timings coming out here though. Raven, he's leaving his options open for the, yeah, he is going for the Deso. So that timing again, when you have that Desolator with the sniper ready to back you up, everyone just melts. It's a lot of physical damage coming out. They are lining up bot here. They are. Ace is going to be targeted, does have the onslaught, but a nice hook shot, DJ is there in time to cancel as he does go for the comps, battery assault and will not allow Ace to be able to get his way up, and now boom, he'll be just fine, he'll zip away as the rest of the team do make their way over, Gaiman, they want to try and force a fight. Yeah, they rotate in, try to find something to counteract, but Fnatic just managed to burst down really quick, great use of the hook shot coming out from DJ to cancel off that onslaught. And this is just, again, space coming out for Armel. They're starting to play behind Raven when they see the opportunity to do so. They know he's got pretty good damage coming out, very hard to melt down when he has that refraction up. And just get that build up you want onto Armel. Like, once the sniper's ready to go, he's playing really forward in the jungle right now on the opposite side of the map. They just don't spot him. They're forced to respond elsewhere. Absolutely, you see the gaming gladiator is still trying to find some targets in that radiant jungle. They just run into the Gen Yor's Undying if they're not too careful, but I suppose they'd like that right now. It's any kill they can get. We'll see Boom just looking on towards that Witch's Blade, and it's just such a nice little power spike for the Midstorm once you do have that up and available. Meanwhile, Jab's gonna start on that top T1 tower, and of course with the Visage you can just kind of do this by yourself. No help necessary here for Jab's, he'll get it done. So just side lane towers being traded. That is still an advantage in terms of map control right now, considering they did take down that mid T1. Darachia, though, getting rather low, does end up taking the, uh, the Tombstone and Undying Morph for himself. He's up committing the Tombstone, however, and might just mean they can't really go for the mid-T1 themselves now. Yeah, just have to farm where they can. They've got decent enough vision on that bot jungle for Darachia to kind of play in this area, keep getting that build up. You're also inching towards that BKB here for Ace. That's the big one. Uh, having that safe initiation from the Primal Beast should allow them more opportunities to kind of have zoom, zoom, zoom in. Onslaught's there, they will connect. Ace is all over. It is now the Global Science. Just to make sure nobody can help Jabs out, they will shut him down once again. Seems to be the game plan of game. Just make sure the Visage does not have a good game. Your problems are kind of relieved later on. Yeah, that's two big ultimates for Jabs. Hook shot though. Boom. He does get caught out. Fox pushback is nice with the cookie. Tofu gonna be there in time to save the day. It's Fnatic, they had started Roshan, but it doesn't seem like they're interested any longer. And that's the key timing for Fnatic. The Deslo is fully up on Raven. They want to clear out that Rosh. 
not finding that kill in Gloom always leaves that threat of a reset and zip in, so they're forced back. They can't really fully commit for the objective. It's not that low anyway, so there's no chance for the Gladiators to come in themselves. And again, the Gladiators just doing so good in finding these openings for themselves. 3 to 7, less than 1k lead still up there for Fnatic, but they're getting some really good breeding room out for Duracho. They're getting some great utility out from Ace and Boom. They just they just know they've, they've got this early timing they can play around with. Well, the question I was about to ask you is, well, John, do they keep going for this Roshan? Like, does Fnatic really want to try again? And the answer is currently yes, they do. With the Desolated timing on Raven, they feel very, very strong to try and do this. Top the Flesh Golem as well here from Januel. What the play will give all the vision be enough fanatic to able to take a very quick roshan for themselves as gaming they just don't have an answer for it yeah they, they just don't have the vision for it to kind of spot that out as well so freebie going out for fanatic secondary life up for our mel our sniper starting to lag a bit behind in comparison to the rocher but at this point in game it's raven that you should be worried about like the dragon lance and deso up working towards possibly that bkb next maybe a blink to just jump the back line and you start to feel really good on fanatic you start to find a way to take these fights yourselves because you don't really have a natural initiator outside of just DJ jumping in. And if you can't find that angle, no one can go again. Boom, he'll make the jump in. Genuel, though, very nice position to make sure he tanks the gank. Hookshot was there from DJ, but it's off the mark. They're not going to be able to counter initiate. You had Armel and DJ trying to move their way up through the mid river, but just unable to land the hook to get the team fight started. Yeah, a bit of an unfortunate miss. They were all kind of set from Fnatic to counter fight in, but the Gladiators were also really heavily grouped up. So it would have been a bit of a big back and forth kind of push. I guess with the Aegis on Armon, you feel a little bit more confident if he was around the area. Unfortunately, wasn't really there to try to make use of that secondary life. And the Gladiators keeping things smooth as far as it can go. I mean, they still haven't been able to equalize the map fully with a tier 1 tower for Fnatic still standing mid. But this aggression, it's it's getting a bit tough for Fnatic to control. Like, the moment they see Boom zip wow. in, they don't have control. This is a interesting position from Armel, but with the double damage, he seems confident to try and secure the kill onto Celery. Still trying to chase him down. Celery is able to get away, but now Tofu is the one in danger, but he's going to be okay. Just walk into the fog. By that T2 tower, he'll be just fine. Fnatic just very confident with the double damage rune that was there on the sniper, but unable to really find anything for it. Yeah, no level up yet on the assassinate either, so couldn't really clean up even with vision available. Managed to bail themselves out in Gladiators. And every single fight you kind of ditch like that, you feel pretty good. The sniper's not farming, he's not really doing much in the jungle, they're not pushing any objectives here on Fnatic's end. They're just going into this investment on Duracho. And he's number one in effort now. He's managed to catch up from all the space. He's often going for the Axe as well. It's gonna be scary once that's off. A little bit low on mana here, he is the storm, but he is gonna be just fine to TP up. They got the vision, but they weren't in range for a hook shot, so he's gonna be just fine. They continue to try and bully Game and Gladiators out of this map, but with that net worth on Duraccio, he's getting bigger and bigger on this Morphling, and that's gonna be a very, very scary timing here from Game and Gladiators and Fnatic. You, you kind of wonder if they're getting enough done with this kind of Visage draft. I, 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 th I think they are. It's really not Visage-centered. It just feels like you're playing along you know, with the potential of Raven and Armel, and, you know, you get the benefit of faster push from Jabs of Deso. They will go for that smoke, smoke play now. They've still got the Aegis for two minutes on Armel, might get a good sneak around here, but they don't quite have that forward vision in the triangle to really play with. Got the traps. They'll get a ward down on the high ground. Die. Gladiators immediately just backing their way out. They do not want part of this team fight. Not on their terms. But he'll move in and see a double stack for himself, so he'll go ahead and take it for free. There's going to be no contest to come out from gaming. They're just not ready yet for that big team fight. Stand that with the Aegis Sub Fnatic do seem like the much, much stronger team at the moment. It's just the game right now. Just continue to evade the side of Fnatic. Just don't force the fight while the Aegis is up. And once it expires, you'll be more than happy to move in as Gaiman. But for now, if you're not really losing anything, there's just no need to fight. Yeah. You've got the scaling on hand. You've got really good gap flows coming out from Doom, coming out from Ace. And you don't really need to worry about too much. You can just play on your own terms. You've got the threat of silence. You've got the threat of kisses here. The jump of Fnatic's really just all in on DJ. And if he doesn't manage to find that angle with a hook shot, if he doesn't manage to trap more than one person there or just disrupt that fight in a big way, the tools of the Gladiators just feel a lot stronger. They are getting some push out though, playing with that Deso, playing with that Visage and just how fast they can melt the towers. They find themselves a tier 2 and could open up the high ground if they want to poke. Yeah, as well as gaming have avoided the side of Fnatic with this Aegis up, two towers have gone down and now maybe even a high ground attempt to come out as Fnatic 
They do still have about 40 seconds left on that Aegis timing. So why the hell not? Just be very cautious though as they do eventually back their way up. While looking to rush this again, it is a best of one series. So you've only got one chance to try and proceed through to the best of threes in the lower bracket. Just definitely don't want to get knocked down this, uh, this round of one if you can, if you're either team. Still securing some farm here onto Rachio, onto Ace. Very confident in their late game scaling here on this Morphling. Speaking of that Morphling now, John, the X is up. I have, I have a lot of good forms to turn into the Undying again with the Tombstone and the Upgraded. The K is going to feel pretty damn good. going to be hard to burst down the Rachio again, going back Radiant to that lack of control. Scaling. And I like this from the Gladiator. Smoke up immediately with that big pickup on the Rachio. They do have... They don't have the best forward vision right now. So they might not be able to find that angle, but if they manage to take Fnatic by surprise here, that could be the turning point for them. Yeah, Gaiman, they are going to move in. Oh, it's a 5v5 smoke situation here, Gaiman. They're going to move in. Smoke broken onto Ace. Tofu, who gets up the kisses immediately as the Global Psalms is there. Onslaught out as well. They do find Gen Yor, but that's only the plus five undying. In fact, never mind, they found jabs now. Ace moving right in onto Armel, but a hook shot. Oh. DJ, he'll save the day for now. The Tombstone is going to be dropped as well. Gen Yor, he pulled back into this team fight. And now Duraccio, he's in big trouble. He's going to drop. Oh, they go too far in the end. A very nice buyback there from Januel just to be able to rejoin the team fight and drop the tombstone. In fact, they just keep going. Assassinate out of the Tofu into the stun now as well. Soul rip out. Tofu's in trouble. He'll try to run, but eventually does end up dropping. Raven able to secure the kill for Fnatic. Finally, they find the team fight they wanted. That's some really sick game sense coming out from Fnatic. Immediately smoking up, not seeing anyone kind of take care of those lanes. Knowing oh, that that's a big one. Boom, he's getting perma stun. Jabs, he's gonna find yeah. it. Great micro up from Jabs and oh, Raven. He'll enjoy the kill for himself, tips out. And this is where it gets scary. The high ground push kicks in. You've got the 15 talent up on Jabs, plus one armor corruption to the familiars with the Deso. And this, this set of objectives just don't last long. Fortify coming out to stave them off. But again, just the game sense coming out from Fnatic. You saw how much commitment came out from the Gladiators. Global sounds and Kisses just to find the Undying. It's just not enough. That certainly is. So, so much committal for that Pulse 5. And with the buyback available, it's just not worth it. It's now Fnatic just getting right back into the mid-tier 2 tower. Duraccio does end up falling behind once again in terms of net worth. He keep trying to force a fight here. At least... Looks like for now, he'll walk into the Sniper and just try to force them back with the Shrapnel Charges. And that's going to be enough. Fnatic, they'll walk their way out just fine. Gaiman, they might just have to take a, a bit of time here. I, I'm not sure if you smoke again straight away. Just want to secure a bit more farm up on your cores before you do get going, especially considering how that last team fight went. I mean, mind you, you don't have the, the buyback on the Undying anymore, so maybe you could force a fight not worrying about that, but it still seems risky. Yeah, it's still a massive risk. It does feel like you're going to need a BKB up on at least the Racho. Maybe ideally you'd want it on Boom as well, just so you can get that safe initiation out. And you can't always start with a Primal Beast. You don't have that Blink Dagger up on Ace, and he's got the BKB. But onslaughting in is pretty telegraphed, so it can be tough. And we've seen it before. DJ tends to be ready to just interrupt the Pulverize when it does kick in, or when you try to look for that angle here. So you need more of that spell immunity up. You need more of those BKBs. That's going to take some time. And Fnatic, with the ground they've gained on this map, you don't have that much room to get all these cores farmed up to that point. Absolutely. I think once again, just hanging around their side of the map for now. No vision on the side of Gaming Gladiators at the moment who have grouped up just a bit. There's a team in that mid lane. It's going to be all about the next Roshan for both these teams. There's now even a BKB to come out. It's a Raven, so even scarier times against the TA. That magic community, it's very hard to be able to try and burst him down throughout these fights. And so much of your damage is just negated through that BKB. They are going to show up mid-river, try and force something here. Traps are out to give any vision if they do need it. Raven is hanging around, but again, he's a very challenging target now with the BKB up. He's will show up, maybe trying to bait a fight, but Fnatic... Very composed, not going to try for it. They just play it safe. They know they've got a pretty good stand on the map. They know they don't have to take these risks. They could just keep farming up a little bit more. They get big time on DJ up with the Ags running. So the overclocking's up, way more damage coming out, way more utility from the Rocket player. And if they can work their angles really, really well. Side of Gladiators, 
they just need to kind of build in. Maybe if you find that opportunity to jump, you go for it, but immediate overclock, immediate flares with that smoke out here from Fnatic. Yeah, absolutely. Such an annoying agony except for to have to try and go against here. DJ just going to continue to spam out against so much vision. Jeez. That's a lot. Game, and they, they just can't escape the rocket flares, and now Tofu is going to get jumped. Just fine though with the cookie. He will be able to break the gap away from Raven as they do move into that mid tier two tower. Nothing to defend. It's a game and they're kind of stuck onto their high ground now. Maybe hoping for a high ground defense. I mean, you could still try to defend the top tier two tower. It, it just feels a little bit rough, especially considering Roshan. It is coming up rather soon. They have to go for a play though. Going for that smoke out. Maybe they find a good angle here. They don't quite have the best vision again on that angle. So they could get a but if they manage to get a good flank here, it would be big. It's just that Johnny Wall's the ones hanging back here. Here we go. Did you well? Gonna be spotted. we will take the gang, tries to drop the tombstone in time. Be able to get it as they do global silence. Johnny Wall will drop. That's one. Now Ace in trouble. He's a much bigger target. Just getting stunned up, but does manage to cook you away. Thanks to Toby, but the hook shot is out. They've got Boom in the storm. He's still gonna be able to slip away, but he's out of mana. He is out of mana, but where's the backup? It's not there yet. In fact, Armel, he was getting to work. Assassinate. It'll fly through and does find Boom on the storm. Not the worst fight for Fnatic, but not the best either. They do give, give two kills away for that. Both supports going down for the mid storm. Gaiman, they'll be okay with it, I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really nice back and forth. Again, they jump onto Johnny Wall. He's the one to break the smoke. He manages to get the tombstone right before the global sounds in a really good spot on that cliff. Only Boom was focusing in on that tombstone. It, it took so long for him that DJ found that opportunity. So it, it's a good play coming out from Gladiators. They need to get something done, but again, they're finding the wrong targets. They're always getting Jow first. They're always having to blow at least one big ult first. You see the replay here. I mean, you find the Undying, but he won't mind. He just gives so much information away to his team. And well, Ace just couldn't really walk away, sadly. He's forced to BKB up, but luckily Tofu was there to save. DJ once again, just fantastic with the hookshot, finding the storm. Just completely out of mana, and something you didn't really notice, John, but from the low ground, Armel, he was just getting right to work onto that storm spirit. The assassinate just barely had enough damages. Now, well, Gaiman, they're trying to force Roshan, but hookshot is there, DJ. Once again, trying to force the fight. Ace with a very nice onslaught to Rachio, and boom, they're onto Jabs. They're trying for the Visage, and they might just have him, but Jabs, he goes into that stone form. He'll survive for a bit longer. DJ, he will try to back his way out of the stuns around, back to Rachio. He's the one in trouble, trying to back his way out, but Jabs is on the chase with the Familiars. In they go. Do they have the damage? They've got the stuns out, and Raven, he'll melt them. Garaccio still trying to run, still in trouble. He is going to end up going down. A two for two so far, but there was a buyback from Tofu. Still ace. He would make his run out as well, but the slows are there from Raven. Can he find a way out? With the onslaught, no, he'll go for the onslaught, cancel and go for the TP instead, but it's not going to work. Oh boy. They, they managed to find Armel in the back. They get some good punishment for their trouble there in the Gladiators, but it cost them so much. Diracho just being taken away. The Morphling being a key component of that late game scaling just isn't able to hold its ground. Jabs is just way too durable. Gets the Wraith packed off, has the Ag Shard up with a Stone Form, and that times so well here for Fnatic. Roshop, you've got the TA, you've got the Visage. It still doesn't take too long, even without that Sniper. Certainly doesn't again Roshan happening, but with the axe up on the clockwork, oh, just it's so annoying. You, you it, can't make your way over. You can't stop it. Like it's giving so much information out. And the gladiators just don't have that same information to play with. Like they've been lacking some ward vision for a while. They've got some watching the Roche pit. But again, it just melts so fast with that damage from Raven and Jack. A lot of damage. Another ages to go the way of Fnatic. That'd be the second one of the game for themselves. And 9k ahead now, a very powerful position for Fnatic. Game and done well, what do they need to do here? I mean, they're in a very rough position now. How do you make the comeback in this game, number one? I mean, you've got the BKB up on the Rajo. He had it last time around. You need to get a good jump in. Maybe if you could take out Armel before you lose your Morphling and then start to focus in onto Raven somehow, and that's how it kind of shapes up. Get a good jump on. Don't jump Jabs or John you all. Because those two, they don't mind being targeted, especially Jabs. I mean, he's just so durable. And John Newell, as you mentioned, just gives information. You need one of these two bigger cores to drop first from the side of Gladiators. And it's going to take some good vision game coming out. But as you see, DJ just keeps spamming out those those flares out. And you just can't stop it. Like, he's just getting so much more out. It's kind of obnoxious how much vision it gives. In fact, I think we saw in an earlier team fight, it almost just killed Celery off with those, uh, those rocket flares. <laughs>
very very scary indeed it's fanatic 9k ahead still moving their way through the top lane might try to force a high ground team fight now i mean you've got three minutes 50 seconds on that ages plenty of time to try and poke and prod this tier three tower in fact now a daedalus up on raven a scary times for game and gladiators 10 to 13 9k lead once again fanatic they're gonna move their way over that tier three tower it's just not gonna last too long they'll be forced to clip it up Gonna be enough for now. Fnatic gonna overstay their welcome. They do back their way out and Gaiman. They're just trying to find any kind of space for the map that they can right now. Yeah, just play where they can, get some build up Ace. while they can hold on. Yeah, you get spotted. The traps from Raven. Ace, how do you find your way out of this one? You're yes. also towards the right side, but the trap is there. And DJ, he's gonna land another beautiful hook as Ace is forced to BKB up, try to run his way out with the Meld Strike. Gonna follow him down as DJ will not leave this man alone. They've got the Primal Beast as well. It gets some space out the map for the for the gladiators right now. It's giving them some room to get oh, that build go. up, but it, it comes at a cost. Someone's got to be sacrificed for that opening. DD up on Armel. I love this build from our well, Armel as well, Mike. Moonshard up on the sniper. He's just plinging away. Yeah. Like he, you've got the damage amp coming in from the visage and the TA. You don't need much yourself. You just need to whack away, especially when you manage to turn on that take aim with a headshot. These heroes will still melt. And again, the jump capabilities for the gladiators are there, but every time we've seen them jump into that back line, it comes at such a massive risk to themselves. They need to synchronize their jump in with their use of the global silence on these big boards. You can put the AC up on jabs now, so even more attack speed here for the arm melt. They do move into that tier three tower and it just melts. It's completely disappearing with this double damage rune active arm melt. He'll just move on to the high ground. It's the protection of the tombstone and the wraith pact. And how even the familiars from jabs Gaiman, they're the ones that need to try and find a way into this fight. But now their bot racks will drop. Just nothing they can do about it. The question is, do Fnatic keep going? They have no reason to really back off. I mean, you still have some threats out from the Gladiators, but you've got Aegis running for about a minute 40 here. You just take control for jump. You know, cut off the resources for the Gladiators, keep all the lanes as shoved out as you can, and swing around if someone overextends. And you've got a really sweet opening with his, uh, with his secondary life on RML, you're not too scared of that jump in from Boom, of that onslaught out from Ace. And they don't even have a way to position themselves. Like, oh, look at these, these flares, they, they just get everywhere. You oh, can't stand it. Look at the he just can't make his way out of there. He almost oh died. God. Rocket plays out as well. He's barely gonna survive. Oh, this is just disgusting. It reminds me of that bounty hunter Tinker meta. You just, you just can't escape the rockets. Nah, it, it just never ends. And it's just down to that axe. And DJ has just been such a menace since picking that up. Smoke out from Fnatic, trying to get the initiative here. They've got a good point from the right side if they manage to catch someone off here. Oh, Boom would be a massive target, but they haven't got the vision here. In fact, never mind, they do DJ. He's in once again with the global silence. Not going to allow them to follow up. In fact, Boom oh. in a big vortex out from the storm into the trap. Or now the pulverize. Ace will keep the fight going. Jabs is just in that stone form, waiting to just go back into this fight. He is completely surrounded, though. Should go, but Duraccio copying way too much damage. And in comes Boom once again on the storm. He finds Jabs on that visage. Is Armel still trying to man up here against Duraccio? But Duraccio is happy to oblige. Just... Well, he's going to back his way out. Familiar's still doing them favors here on the side as Raven is going to TP away in the game and they find a way to defend. They hold on. Really great jump in from the side of the Gladiators. That Ags pickup from Boom turning the tides. That's it. That's the coordination we needed to see. You know, get that AoE vortex down, get your kisses out. Really good use of silence here as well to get them that time to re engage. And the side of Fnatic now, they've seen those tools. They can't afford to stay as pumped up as they once were. We need to be a lot more cautious onto the high ground, as we can see here again. Yeah, look at this. I mean, Global Science was just immediately out, saving the day, and now the Vortex. The unexpected zip back in from Boom really paying off, and when you've got the combination of the Trample and the Pulverize, just so hard to survive through all that damage output. It, it, it took them a really long time to kill off Jabs as well, despite all of that. It's just they managed to isolate all of these heroes really nicely, split it up after taking them all together. And Armel, even if he had the Aegis, he had no one to follow through on his second life. Forced to back off and just kind of play it safe. They're keeping themselves in this game here, the Gladiators, but they're not able to really 
push out the lanes as far as they can. You know, it's not an opening for a tier two. It's not quite an opening for Roshan either. So they're gonna have to repeat that. Because despite those losses, Fnatic, they still have the initiative here. They still have superior map control and that threat for the high ground still lined up. You've got the Scotty now up on the morph as well. So Durant here, just a little bit tanky and a little hard to deal with here. 16, I love myself a close game done. And right now, 7k net worth. Nothing to write home about if you're Fnatic. It's 36 and a half minutes into the game. So 6k really means nothing here between these two teams. Sure game and they are down one rats, but still anyone's game. It is a best of one, so one of these teams do have to go home after this one. Everything on the line here for these two teams has been such a long year throughout the DPC. Do smoke up as four game, and they're going to try and make something happen, but who do they find? It's just so hard to get the vision advantage against Fnatic's draft. You've got the rocket players, the traps, the shrapnels, just everything working in their favor. But they are still sneaking up through the triangle, but this smoke, we're out soon. I just find jabs on the visage as Ace. He does spot him out and does try for the onslaught. Trying to keep up. Does end up finding the visage, but can't really follow up with that. Just go into that stone form and be just fine. As now the familiars just gonna stun up the primal beast. Do they have the follow-up damage here on Fnatic? I don't think they do, but they are still just throwing out everything but the kitchen sink. But Ace is gonna be just fine. He will just casually walk his way out. It's a very low commitment from Fnatic to shove you away there. You, you don't need to throw any bodies forward. Jabs is still really durable. It doesn't mind being jumped on that smoke. The Rogers kind of playing tag, isolated for his team, but the side Fnatic isn't quite keen to jump onto that this, onto that morphling as well. I mean, he's got the spot, he's got a lot of stats, but in Manta, he's got a lot of ways of saving himself. So he's a lot tougher of a target for Fnatic to just try and burst down. But they're still getting that build off. And they're still number one on Raven with that full Daedalus up. And they, they could just wait for the next Roche. It is just around 10 seconds away when we'll see that respawn. Good shove in mid from Roche, but again, they're not really able to fully commit for that objective yet. Absolutely. Him just very, very careful right now. One team fight could just, just decide this game. She just haven't got the buybacks available. Him and they'll just take over that Radiant Triangle for now. Oh, it's a quick Roche. It's certainly a very quick Roshan here. It should be in the favor of game, and they're in position for this one. And Celery seems to know he might just get lucky. Five seconds to go. We'll see if Fnatic can try to spot this one out as well. You do have the advantage of the Rocket players to fly in from DJ. They are focused right now on the mid tier two tower. And there's your Roshan, Gaiman. This could be the blessing they've been looking for here. Roshan does start going down, but the Rocket players are going to fly out and give the vision. Question is, can they make it in time? They are making their way over. In fact, Roshan is being abandoned right now as game, and they do not have faith. They can take it in time. Fnatic will immediately make their way over, and just with this Rocket Flare spam, it's so hard to try and sneak Roshan away. It's just, it's just so much damage coming out, and the hero's not even close by. Like, they whittle away, they know it's such a risk. If that angle is found by DJ and they just get sucked down at the Roche. They do have good counterplay in the, in the pit though. And the AoE Vortex is still ready on Boom. And you've got the kisses to back you up. Global Sons is ready to go as well. So Fnatic, it's not an easy call for them to commit to this one either. They just picked up a side device here on the TA to boot. Raven, maybe a bit, of, a bit of a surprise reveal here with this Hex, but they're going to get started on the Roshan. It's already less than half an HP away. Game and they're going to fight with oh, Tofu. He's just going to drop. The Rocket players get it done. DJ able to snipe the kill there and they find Roshan. Oh, but what can you do? You try to run, but the Rockets just keep chasing. It just doesn't stop. You get the full Ags out now as well to pass over here on the side of Fnatic. I and mean, you're feeling great. You get the Ags onto Jabs. He's got the Silence to the Grave. He can sneak around to the back the line now. They've got so much damage. And the damage from DJ, I mean, he's, he's standing further away than the sniper. He's got so much long range here from Fnatic, you're just barraging the side of Gladiator. Radiant's spears. Game, and again, not out of this game, but they're an Aegis down now, T's down as well. Fnatic, they're going to make their way over. See if they can move up to that high ground once again. Just one good team fight, and this game is theirs. Gaiman, they still have an opportunity to try and turn this one around, but they need that good team fight to go their way. It's gonna be that easy though. See the split push here from Ace. Primal Beast for the top lane is being forced in now. We've seen how fast Armel can take these down. Mind you, last time he did have a double damage room to be fair. It's still a very painful process for this tier 3 tower, however. Oh, just standing from a mile away and there's just nothing you can do.
Like, these towers just melt with that song that's a great. Once you break that invis, the, the damage is ridiculous. Jump in, Burby's gonna try, but there's a side the vice out from Raven. Locking down the storms till they do find at least the Aegis. And Burby, he can go for a reset. Not a bad start whatsoever here for GG. It's Duraccio, he'll keep moving forward, trying to find the sniper, but needs to back his way out. Just can't deal with the damage output of Armel at the moment. He did have the refraction charges to play with those, so it didn't really take any damage. Sperm, gonna move in again, but a quick BKB out Armel, this time ready for it, but instead they found Raven on the TA. He goes down, the Celery, he drops as well, but they do have the buyback, and now Ace in the backside with the pulverize into the Vortex. Sperm just setting up perfectly. Takes out from Boom. Yeah, he, he makes it work. He finds the angle back in. He knows that the BKB out on Raven is gone. So he can just punish that TA, focus in. No secondary life up on Armel, and they just melt down from that damage. Like the control came out. They didn't have global songs. That's why Fnatic might have felt a little bit more confident to hang around there. But they just they still don't have a way of really punishing Boom when he does manage to get that jump in. I mean, they have the hex. But the Storm, being aware of that, can just zip a little bit further away and just be safe. Now suddenly Game of Gladiators back with this game. Only a 3k advantage, no Aegis to worry about. They do move onto the high ground, the T3 tower. In big trouble. Durachia, he'll get it started. He'll force the cliff out. But it's not going to mean Durachia backs off. Nobody's bought back, nobody's respawned quite yet from Fnatic. So the map is completely free for Game. And it's been such a long time since they've had this kind of opportunity on the map. They do force out another cliff. Down towards the bot side, Duraccio goes. He wants two lanes for his trouble. The question is, does he even find one? Because the respawn timers are running a little bit low, but it seems like they do find the mid-racks while they can. Duraccio will find that bottom tier three tower onto the bot racks. It's a very quick process here for Gaiman. Two racks is up. They'll be very happy with that. No need to rush any further. They'll back their way out. Now, and now the Gaiman Gladiators are in complete control of this game. Really good racks advantage coming out. Their team fights coming in. Their scaling's shaping up. And this, this Diracho Morphling with the Daedalus up, which just does so much damage. And Fnatic, again, they get overconfident. They know Global Sounds is down, but they don't respect the storm here. They're just doing such a fantastic job throughout these fights. Just every time the Vortex is up, there's just nothing you can do. And look at this Vortex from a mile away, just dragging everybody in. There's no chance to fight back once the BKBs are gone. And the game, and you keep that up, this game is yours. Yeah, it's just in their hands as long as they can keep executing. Fnatic, though, they're not going to just lie down there. Smoke out from them. Roshan still a ways off, as that was fairly fresh in the last fight. But if they manage to get the ambush here, it's big. Still, you've got protection now on Boom. He's got his own BKB up. So even if he's caught off guard a bit, as long as he's able to turn that BKB on when he sees Raven nearby, then how do you lock down the storm? You just don't have much to stop this. Hesitation now. Fnatic, I mean, they would have smoked up, but they just aren't going to find the opening. Another double damage rune, though, is going to be found out by Fnatic, so Raven, he'll take it this time around. No bottle to stall that one up, he will just pick it up himself. It just doesn't seem like they're going to be able to smoke up and find some kind of opening, however. They're just going to sit back for now and just wait out the perfect time. Problem is now, Duraccio, top of the net worth board, looking very, very farmed up, working on towards that Satanic. He's going to be a real problem once he has that up. He's, he's already extra durable on this here, even with the Scotty up on our melt. It's not like he can just solely dedicate his time onto the Racho. You, you've got a lot of room now for the Racho to dance around on that Morphling. And again, they're just so slippery on the side of Game and Gladiator. So you have to worry about Storm. You have to worry about the Primal Beast. You have to worry about the Morphling jumping on top of you. They've got this really good start on the fights for the Gladiators with the Global Silence up. And just don't have that same control. It still just kind of goes down to DJ and Jabs. If they maybe play with their familiars and the hook shot, well, that's where the game can start to shine for Fnatic. But that's a lot harder to pull off than just a zip in or an onslaught in with silence to back you up. We go again. Offside. He's going to hang around his own jungle now. Still maybe just trying to search for Fnatic, but they're not around. They free back into that radiant triangle of their own. You have the opportunity to smoke, at least for now, Raven is going to use his own ninja here. Get his own smoke going. To make sure he can rotate across the map and be undetected by game. And just an, such an important piece of the puzzle here for Fnatic is that TA, and you just can't afford to lose her by herself. Gaiman remaining grouped up. That look of player vision just giving so much information back the way. Fnatic is Gaiman. 
Just take over the top side of the map, but they might even start a high ground push. Yeah, to get that done, Char, huh? And he will. Global Sans will be there, ensuring they can not initiate as now Durantia moving very far forward. Vortex is there. They have found Armel. Hookshot is out from DJ Boom. He's running a little bit low on mana. Still Durantia. He'll keep moving forward onto the sniper. Do they have the damage? They do. The TP attempt will not be enough. They do lose that sniper. Now Ace spotting out Raven, unable to catch him. Instead, Januar gonna sit back and make sure Raven does remain protected. They cannot afford to lose his TA right now as Boom. He's gonna move in once again onto the Vestige and they'll just take down Jabs. No contest at the moment for Game and Gladiators. It's Fnatic slowly but surely just falling apart. Those are massive kills coming out for Gaiman. They've got the opportunity to really shove in, force some buybacks out. I mean, Armel, I mean, he had cheese. He didn't want to pop if he just BKBs, tries to bail out. But the output of the Morphling is just so high. Would have full Daedalus now with a full Satanic on hand as well. He can just sustain through, again, through that Scotty that Armel wants to threaten with. On the side of Fnatic, they, they've got to play it a lot more cautious. But the Gladiators, and they're in control now. Yeah. Clearly in control. 7k up, it's not the most amazing, but it's really just how much Dirachos managed to farm up and just how well Boom's been playing. Just with that Ags, this game has turned all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a, such a great comeback here from Gaiman so far. Seeing that buyback status there, Jonathan. So many heroes in the map right now have buyback. In fact, there's only two that don't. In fact, it might be uh, 9 out of 10 very, very soon. It's both teams waiting for that massive team fight where they are going to spend them, but Duraccio. Well, he'll at least get started on that tier 3 top tower. Not going to last too long at this rate. They do flip it up. Raven going to oh. try and jump in the side of the vice out. And now the Global Sun's going to stop them from chasing Duraccio. He'll be able to BKB up and be just fine. The Zombies continue chasing, but again, seems like he's going to be able to get his way out. Fnatic not interested in chasing at the moment. They'd rather just keep on their high ground. Don't throw a fight. Just, just hold your ground right now. You've got the Sniper. You can stall this game out fairly long on that hero. He also did manage to force out the Global Silence from Celery. So it is an opportunity for Fnatic if they get a little bit more info out. Scouting around with DJ and his flares. Next Roche, not too long away here, Mike. 20 seconds away. Gonna be the flashpoint for both sides to kind of fight over to kind of determine this game. Here we go again. Rocket players flying out. Getting all the vision. Roshan, like you mentioned, John, very, very close to respawning now. Gaiman prepped for the next Roshan. It's just when you've got this vortex on the storm, it just feels like such a great position to try and fight in. Strong position for Gaiman in that Roshan pit indeed. As well, there's your fourth Roshan now. All the items available. Gaiman, if they can win this next team fight, the game just feels like it's basically theirs. Mind you, you, you do still have a lot of buybacks on the map. You can still play around if you do end up going down as Gaiman. Wait for that right moment to start Roshan themselves. They understand they're not going to be able to be undetected though. That's the real big problem. Instead, they're going to hang around that Radiant Triangle. Duraccio moves in. They found DJ on the clockwork. In trouble already. Global Star set it back him up. And now the Vortex. Boom. Right into the backside. Finds Armel. Finds Raven. What a Vortex from Boom. Just finding all the course he could ask for. And they do buy back. They've got to try and force the fight right now. Tofu's gone already on the snap fire. But he will buy back as well. Backpack's being expended. Gaiman will get rid of the familiars from Jabs. Armel trying to get to work, but it does feel like he's lacking a bit of damage here on this sniper. They do move in once again to the Vortex. Boom! Just all over it. They found the sniper again. Armel, he'll eat the cheese up. He'll go for the concussive grenade and try to force this fight the best he can. But where's the damage output? They're still trying. Raven, they'll fight Ace at least. Armel, he's manning up. He is trying, but they are down. Both down with that buyback, Gaiman. They may have just made the comeback. They, they've got a really clear shot. They know those two cores just don't have buybacks. Having committed it earlier on, Zhao can't do much to stop this. And they go on to that last set of racks. Fnatic, 90 seconds without the sniper, 100 seconds without the TA. Oh, that's, okay. that's so much time. He's going to drop as well. Just trying to hide in the tree line. That's it. GG's called Game and Gladiators. There's a rough half of the first game, but at the end of the day, they make the comeback happen. And well, Fnatic, they tried their best, but they were just unable to close out the game and a couple bad team fights, and it was all over. Game is proving to be the better team today. Yeah, Game really played excellent. They, they just rushed this axe out onto Boom, and they played around that.